Okay. Good morning. I'm Dr. Paul Bulberding, <laughs> Professor of Medicine at UCSF and Director of the AIDS Research Institute. I'd like to welcome you to UCSF and thank you for joining us as we announce the launch of the AMFAR HIV Cure Research Institute. I was proud to have been selected by my colleagues to help lead this effort and will serve as the principal investigator uh, of the institute. As a lot of you know, San Francisco has a long and enviable record of responding uh, to the HIV uh, AIDS epidemic uh, beginning in 1981. And I have to note Mer Silverman uh, here uh, in the group who was health director at the time and instrumental in our response, um, also a long uh, colleague at AMFAR. We always saw research uh, as a way of bringing hope, even at a time uh, when there was very little uh, hope to be, uh, to be found in, in responding to this epidemic. And I, I think always in close connection to our community. And it's good to have community leaders uh, here with us today. We helped describe the disease even before it was called AIDS. Uh, we helped find the virus, the work of Jay Levy. Uh, and. Uh, work of many scientists to help understand how the virus works uh, and how it interacts uh, with the immune system. And some of those people are going to be uh, here with us today. We helped develop early treatments uh, and over time uh, help make them uh, more potent, less toxic, and more convenient. And uh, at this point, as many of you know, uh, we have many treatments that are available with three or four different medicines in a single pill uh, that people can take once daily. Uh, that suppresses their virus. We still long for an end to this epidemic. We've been doing this uh, too long. San Francisco is leading uh, the way in getting to zero. This is a public health uh, uh, effort to find and treat everyone that's infected. Uh, we think that's really important. But today, uh, we're here to talk about uh, efforts uh, to find an actual uh, cure for uh, this disease. Either eradicating HIV completely from the body uh, or by driving it down to the point where the, where the body's own immune system is able to keep it under control. Now, San Francisco scientists have been leading uh, in many aspects of cure research, uh, and, uh, and it's appropriate that uh, that's, they're with us today. When AMFAR announced uh, a rigorous national competition for a single cure institute, uh, San Francisco did what we've done so many times. Uh, we brought together uh, a team of people. A uh, team of scientists that have complementary uh, expertise uh, coming together with a commitment uh, to get the job done. With support from AMFAR, uh, we'll have even more freedom uh, to think bigger uh, and to pivot even more quickly as the, as the science in this field evolves, which it's doing uh, remarkably quickly. All of our main investigators have a relationship to UCSF, but all of them have other uh, associations and affiliations. Uh, Steve Deeks and Mike McCune uh, are at the Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. Uh, Warner Green is at the Gladstone Institutes, uh, and Satish Pillai uh, at the Blood Systems Research Institute. Together, these uh, and many, many other uh, partners here at UCSF and elsewhere uh, we'll be working in labs uh, to find new drugs and approaches uh, to cure HIV. They're going to be finding ways to find and measure the virus uh, in the blood and in the tissues uh, where we think the virus mostly lies uh, dormant. And uh, we will be finding uh, ways to bring these treatments uh, into the clinic. Uh, we have a long history of people with HIV volunteering for uh, as, as partners in our research, and that's going to continue uh, in this uh, as well. These scientists will be here to answer your questions, and I really encourage you uh, to uh, talk to them at the, at the end of the uh, uh, press briefing uh, to learn more uh, directly what they're, uh, what they're doing. As I said, we have collaborators in many uh, universities and companies, uh, but we have a new, uh, really important collaborator in the form of AMFAR, the Foundation for AIDS Research. Uh, we're doing something, in my experience, rather unique. Uh, we're inviting the chief scientist from AMFAR, Rowena Johnson, uh, to join our dream team uh, to make sure that uh, we can make the decisions uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, they're going to hold our feet to the fire, and we're going to respond to that. Uh, and I think we're going to make more progress than we otherwise could because of that. And we welcome uh, them as, as partners. 
I'm personally delighted that San Francisco remains as committed as ever <clears throat> to putting the epidemic behind us, uh, especially worth noting on the eve of World AIDS Day uh, that we're uh, making this commitment to finding a cure. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce the next speaker, Kevin Frost. Kevin is the uh, CEO of uh, AMFAR, uh, a longstanding friend, uh, lots of work in this field, and uh, we welcome you to this. And again, thank you for uh, your trust in us as we, as we put this institute on the road. Uh, forgive me if I read a little bit of these remarks. Paul's a much better public speaker than I am. Uh, but let me begin by thanking Paul and his outstanding colleagues here at UC San Francisco, at the Gladstone Institute, at the Blood Systems Research Institute. I can't tell you how excited we are uh, about this incredible collaborative venture because we hope and in fact we expect that it's going to help us realize our aim of achieving the scientific basis for a cure uh, for HIV by the end of 2020. Uh, this announcement and this $20 million, as you know, uh, to establish the AMFAR Institute for HIV Cure Research is actually the culmination of many years' work. We at AMFAR initially gave a framework to our cure research efforts when we established something uh, that we call ARCH, which is the AMFAR Research Consortium on HIV Eradication. We established that in 2010. And several research teams actually here at UCSF uh, have been involved in studies supported by that. Two years ago, we announced the launch of our Countdown to a Cure for AIDS initiative with the goal as I just mentioned, of uh, building the scientific framework uh, for a cure by the end of 2020. Now, not so long ago, uh, the idea of a cure was met with disdain and, and a great deal, in fact, of skepticism. And AMFAR was among the first to actually embrace the goal of a cure. And in doing so, we were accused of being irresponsible and of giving false hope uh, to a goal that many believed was simply not scientifically possible. Well, thankfully, there has been a tectonic shift in, in, that was precipitated by the Berlin patient, which many of you have heard about. He's the first person who uh, has ever been cured of HIV. But it was also a turning point uh, for many of us because for the very first time, we had a proof of concept that a cure was possible. And so it opened up new avenues of investigation and it illuminated many complex challenges standing in the way of a more broadly applicable cure. But this enormous breakthrough wasn't met with the kind of investments necessary to capitalize on it and rapidly move the field forward. To fill the gap, at the beginning of this year, we launched a $100 million investment strategy in support of our Countdown to a Cure initiative. So the AMFAR Institute for HIV Cure Research, based here in San Francisco, is the cornerstone of that strategy. We've learned from other historic technological challenges, like the Manhattan Project, for example, or like NASA's Race to the Moon, that getting teams of top scientists to collaborate in a focused, cohesive enterprise is a way to achieve extraordinary goals. But I also want to hasten to add that we're not putting all of our eggs in a single basket. On top of the $20 million grant here, we'll be investing an additional $80 million through a variety of funding mechanisms to ensure that every promising idea will have the potential to advance the search for a cure, wherever it may originate, and can be brought to fruition. So you might be wondering what we mean when we say develop the scientific basis for a cure. We couch our goal in those terms because at the end of the day, we're, we're realistic about what we think we can achieve. In all likelihood, there's, there will not be a eureka moment. You're unlikely to wake up one morning and see a headline in the San Francisco Chronicle that says cure for AIDS found. This is going to be incremental and evolutionary. 
So we've identified what we think the principal barriers are, the reservoirs or pockets of the virus that remain in every person, even those who've reached undetectable levels of HIV. So it's now generally agreed that there are four key questions that need to be answered. Where exactly in the body are these reservoirs located? How do they become established and how do they maintain themselves? How much virus do they contain? And finally, how can they be safely gotten rid of? We need to develop the tools and agents to answer these questions. Once we have answers, we can begin to cure some of the people, some of the time, and hopefully eventually most of the people most of the time. Ultimately, we need a safe and effective cure that can be made available to everyone who needs it. It may be that we won't have the foundation for a cure by 2020. After all, 2020 is a goal, it's not a guarantee. But we'll certainly be a lot closer than we are right now and a lot better off for having tried. And after very rigorous selection process that culminated in the choice of San Francisco as the base for the AMFAR Institute for HIV Cure, I'm confident that we are supporting a team of researchers who have absolutely the best chance of making our goal a reality. And with that, I want to introduce our next speaker, who is a veteran AIDS campaigner himself, someone who's been in the fight against AIDS longer than just about anybody I know. He, um, he has a hobby of, of doing fashion on the side uh, and leads one of New York and uh, landmark fashion houses, but his full-time job is with AMFAR, where he's been uh, an amazing leader and a mentor to all of us who have the privilege of working on the staff of the organization. He's the chairman of the board of AMFAR, Kenneth Colt. Um, thank you, Kevin, and uh, <laughs> thank you, Dr. Volderberg. Um, I have been on the board of AMFAR longer than I like to admit, since 1987. Um, that's almost about 30 years. I've been chairman for the last 11. Um, throughout my tenure, I've seen countless twists and turns of this epidemic, and of course, its staggering growth worldwide. AMFOR has been, I think you know, unwavering in its determination to find answers um, creatively and resourcefully. That determination is undimmed and is possibly greater now than it ever has been. Our research program has gotten steadily bigger and bolder over the years. Our mission unchanged and absolutely clear to find a cure for the over 35 million people living with the deadliest virus of our time. I'm extremely proud to be here today to announce what may be our biggest and most important initiative in AMFAR's history. It's very fitting that UCSF has been selected as the headquarters for AMFAR's Institute for HIV Cure Research. San Francisco has played a central role in the epidemic since the very beginning. Its people have suffered in great numbers as a consequence of AIDS and the physicians and researchers at UCSF and its affiliates have been in the front lines since day one and have led the way in responding to this deadly epidemic. We've enjoyed close ties to both the Bay Area community and the university for many years working together on numerous research projects. As Dr. Balderberg also um, alluded, one of AMFAR's original board members, in fact, is Dr. Merv Silverman, who's sitting here in the fourth row, um, who was at the time director of health here in San Francisco from 1977 to 1985, probably the earliest and the earliest and probably the darkest days of the crisis and has helped serve um, as a director ever since. The AMFAR Institute will give new shape and form to those ties, a defining multi-year partnership that is without question a high point that is critical 
to AMFAR's mission. The value of this collaboration cannot be overstated, and Kevin took you through it. The experience, expertise, and technological resources that UCSF, at UCF, at SF, UCSF, and its diverse partners bring to the table are unparalleled. When looking at UCSF as a possible partner of this enterprise, our staff were also struck by the intangibles, the sense of shared vision, the can-do attitudes, and the profound and unequivocal commitment to bringing the AIDS epidemic to an end through innovative research. That is our mission. I firmly believe that with the right commitment to talent and resources, we can and will develop a cure once and for all for HIV AIDS. Um, to Kevin's point, I have often over the years said sometimes to cringes, for years we have come far, but we am far from where we <laughs> need to be. But today I can, I can truly tell you, we're not that far anymore. Um, I got involved early on, also um, in the mid 80s, um, when I looked around and it was apparent that the pervasiveness, not as much of AIDS, but of the stigma of AIDS was so devastating. And and it was paralyzing to so many of our communities. And it seemed appropriate to initiate a public service campaign, which I did for AMFAR back in the mid 80s um, in a partnership with the photographer, Annie Leibowitz. And we created an advertising campaign called For the Future of Our Children. Today, 30 years later, a cure for HIV remains one of the greatest gifts we could give to our children and for future generations. And, and I, for one, won't rest until we achieve it. We had hoped that our good friend and unwavering ally in the fight against AIDS, also from, from the very beginning, also from San Francisco, House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi would be able to join us um, on this auspicious occasion. Unfortunately, um, <clears throat> Leader Pelosi has business to attend in Washington, but she kindly sent this personal video message, which we'll play for you. So, uh, as you may have guessed uh, from our comments about Merv Silverman, uh, the HIV research community here has always had a very close connection to the community and to our political leaders. And it's great uh, that we have, in addition to, uh, uh, to uh, Mrs. Pelosi, uh, with us today, David Campos. Uh, David uh, is District 9 supervisor here in San Francisco, has uh, long been a supporter. Uh, and I think it's true that District 9 includes San Francisco General Hospital, uh, where uh, many of us have worked over the over the years. So, David, uh, welcome to the podium. Thank you, Doctor. I'm still not used to the Zuckerberg piece, uh, so it will take time. Uh, uh, my name is David Campos. I represent District Nine, which, in many respects, includes some of the most vulnerable communities when it comes to not just general issues around health, but HIV and AIDS. Uh, that includes the mission, that includes neighborhoods, that include people from all over the world that actually come to San Francisco because they see it as a safe haven. And yet, as we struggle in San Francisco to be the first city to reach uh, the, the goal of zero infections, you know, this getting to zero effort, we know that it is very challenging, especially with some communities. And I'm talking about communities like the transgender Latino community uh, that is one of the most stigmatized and disenfranchised communities. And so the idea that here in San Francisco we would tackle this effort not only by trying to get to zero but to actually find a cure is something that is very much in line with what San Francisco has been about. As a gay man, I'm especially proud to see that finally a disease that has cost so much to this community 
uh, I think we'll find uh, at some point, as Nancy Pelosi said, its end here in San Francisco. Uh, I'm very proud to be a part of it. I want to thank AMFAR uh, for the, the contribution over so many years, uh, for the willingness and the commitment to finding a cure, when, even when it was controversial to say that that should be an objective. Uh, and that you have chosen San Francisco is something that gives me a great deal of pride. Uh, I also want to say that as I'm thinking here today, uh, I, I want to take a moment, uh, and, and I always do this uh, with something like this because I think it's important as we look uh, to find a cure that we remember all the people that we've lost to this disease. And I specifically want to mention a really close friend of mine who died of AIDS a few years back. Uh, and I think it's in his memory and the memory of so many people that we have lost uh, that we need to make sure that we find a cure as quickly as possible. And the memory of uh, Michael Goldstein and all who died, if you may join me in a brief moment of silence. Thank you. Now let's go find a cure. Yeah. I've mentioned our uh, uh, connections to the political leaders. Thank you, David, uh, and to the health department, Merv. Uh, but another uh, absolutely essential uh, partner that we've enjoyed here in San Francisco from the beginning days of the epidemic is our connection to our uh, patients, to people living with and affected by uh, this virus. Uh, Matt Sharp will be speaking next is a, a man who uh, is close to so many of us, a really good friend, a really good colleague. Uh, Matt um, has been living with this virus for many long years, too long. So Matt, uh, welcome to the podium. Well, good morning. Um, thanks, Paul, Kenneth, Rowena, and Kevin for including me today. It's a really an exciting moment, and I'm sitting here listening to all the speakers getting a lot of chills. So it's uh, that's kind of fun and exciting and scary in a way, too. But um, I want to tell you a little bit about my story. Uh, in 1991, I came to San Francisco like a lot of other gay men to be welcoming in an inclusive city. I, I came to be in this model city for AIDS care and treatment and what some considered then already the second AIDS generation, the second wave of illness and death. I, I sought the best care that was available, probably in the country, and I joined countless clinical trials. I lost count of how many trials I, I've been in. Um, um, even though I was at a state of sort of a precipice in my clinical care and, and condition, um, those were the very studies, even though some of them were risky, that eventually set me up for drug resistance. Um, but afforded me to buy time and um, until the next better drug came along. Um, when I think about it, it's astounding that we now have this wave, this new wave of knowledge and really momentum to search for an HIV cure. And it's really amazing that I'm alive to bear witness to that. Uh, it's difficult in many ways to stop today and remember the countless deaths in light of this exciting focus into a cure. So now I introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Matt Sharp, and I'm a long-term AIDS survivor. <coughs> I was diagnosed in 1980 at 34 years old. Now I'm 59. I've lived half my life with HIV. I've always worked with, um, in HIV, and now I'm an independent HIV education and advocacy consultant, and I live across the bay in lovely Berkeley. Um, I thought it might be helpful at this press briefing to explain a bit um, about our rich history. 
from a grassroots perspective from someone living with AIDS. We tend to wipe out or distort history. But now in the context of this really amazing cure research opportunity from AMFAR and others, with a team of researchers who have always been on the leading edge, thinking outside of the box, in a model city where it all started, in a hospital where some of the first people with AIDS were welcomed and many, many tragically lost their lives. So indeed, it seems like a long time since the first cases of this horrific disease spread in populations in major urban centers in the U.S. when no one knew what the cause was. Here in San Francisco, as you've already heard, the first affected population of gay men began mobilizing early due to their own fear, plus the apathy of a wider community that needed to be awakened. Tragically, the apathy was most, mostly derived from the stigma from those becoming infected then, gay men, people of color, and people who used injection drugs. Just a few neighborhoods over from here, frightened gay men were posting pictures of themselves and their friends and lovers with KS lesions on a Castro Street pharmacy window to alert their own community. You may not know about KS, as it was a rare skin cancer that was associated as a scarlet letter on those who were affected by HIV in the primordial days of the epidemic. The skin cancer was painful, stigmatizing, and debilitating. But today, there are few cases as a result of effective antiretroviral treatment and, and cancer treatments. And this was all made to happen through advocacy, community mobilization, and a research community. As I mentioned before, I participated in dozens of clinical trials. My work and volunteerism revolve around HIV treatment advocacy, long-term survivors, and cure research advocacy. This incredible AMFAR award is joining with other funding sources, other research opportunities, and some of the most creative scientific minds, as I mentioned, to create the knowledge momentum that is going to take to eventually, it's going to take to rid the globe of the most devastating and unsustainable epidemic of our time. It's going to take the will of all of us to join this momentum um, on this World AIDS Day and into the future until we get to the end results. Thank you. That's the uh, end of the prepared uh, remarks. Uh, we're all going to be available uh, to uh, answer questions, or at least try to. Um, I think we could take some public uh, questions now, um, if, you, if you'd like. Uh, and then I'm sure uh, we'll be available later for, uh, for individual discussions. But uh, with us today, again, we have the, the uh, the, the dream team, uh, Steve Deeks uh, here, Warner Green, Rowena Johnson, uh, and Mike McHune and Satish Falai. So uh, you have a rich source of, uh, of information uh, uh, in front of you. Um, if there are questions? Yes, Maybe please. Paul, you could just summarize where we're at sort of clinically and from a research perspective. D David, thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, for people outside of right. the so our, our, our yeah, so our, our treatments are, are really incredibly effective. Uh, and at this point, uh, many people are fully suppressed, and yet we know if we stop the treatments, the virus will eventually come back. Um, <clears throat> lots of interesting questions about why it comes back sooner in some and later in others. Uh, the, the thought that maybe the people with a late relapse uh, have a better immune control of the virus, uh, so that's an avenue to be explored. Uh, we are also very interested to find out uh, where the virus is lying dormant. We know that it's there because it comes back, uh, but where in the body it, that is. We can look in the blood, but we suspect it's largely in tissues, which are harder to examine. Uh, but now the, uh, the uh, thrust of our work is to try to do uh, things to reactivate the latent virus, uh, the virus that's lying dormant, uh, so that it can be recognized better by the body and perhaps better, especially if we use some other 
uh, uh, drugs or other approaches to try to recognize those, uh, those, those in infected cells that are starting to produce uh, more virus. So the idea is to, what we have called uh, shock and kill, shock the virus uh, into activity, uh, and then facilitate the killing of those cells by various means. So that's our kind of central approach, but as we've said, the field is moving so quickly um, as we wrote this grant, it, we were inserting things the last day. Uh, it moves so fast. Other questions? Yeah. Just down the road, of course, is Gilead. How might how are companies participating in this endeavor? Great uh, question. And Gilead is actually one of our partners in this. Uh, they're quite interested in cure research, um, and they have uh, <coughs> approaches that are really. Uh, quite in parallel to the ones that uh, uh, that Steve and uh, <coughs> others have been looking at here in San Francisco, so that's going to be a central part of our collaboration. How 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 closely? I mean, are they going to have people maybe working with you? Or is it going to be very close? But... They, they were also here when we did our site visit uh, to yeah. review the grant. <laughs> Gilead folks were here, and I spoke to them, and they said, you know, they 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 recognize San Francisco as their home, and they said. It, they want to be part of this effort very much. So we welcome that collaboration. Does anyone on the phone have any questions? Does anybody on the phone have any questions? Okay. Imagine we could um, invite people to stay, make themselves available uh, if there are individual questions for the scientists. Did you have one more? Just, Kevin, what other cities threw their hat in the ground? Who are we uh, competing? No, uh, we don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> they don't know the answer to that question. Um, I could tell you and then kill you, but... <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, it is fair to say that this application, if, if you know the world of AIDS research um, and you know the world of cure research, it's a very small world, actually. The number of institutions that are actually real players in that uh, are not that many, uh, and they are the best institutions of medical research in the world today, and this application rose above all of them. So it says a great deal about the collection of talent uh, that, that Dr. Boldenberg has mentioned here. Um, it's spreading. Um, it's spreading. Is it? Uh, right. And he already introduced his, his dream team, so I won't reintroduce Dr. D. Stinks or Broder Wien or any of those guys. But uh, this is really a, a collection of talent that is uh, simply unsurpassed, and we are, we're thrilled to be working with the group here. Is there, can you describe the application, I don't know, in terms of pages, or what was involved? I can describe how many emails 